Kingdom Hearts Final Mix has a total of 56 PlayStation trophies, and the Platinum Trophy has only been obtained by 10% of all players. My goal is to become one of only three people in the world who have gotten the Platinum Trophy in under 10 hours. To save enough time, the entire Platinum Trophy run is done completely on Proud Mode. My main objective right now is to defeat Ansem in less than 15 hours, which is very easy, but I have to do this without changing any keyblades or accessories and without pressing continue after dying, while on Proud Mode, where most things in the game can kill me in two hits. I start by selecting the staff and giving up the shield, because the staff gives you plus one MP, because in this game, the longer your MP bar is, the stronger your magic will be. It's also very important to select the bottom options for these questions for at least two of the characters to get into the Knight EXP route, which results in you needing less EXP overall to get to level 100 for the Level Master Trophy. During a lot of the early game, I'll be using the EXP Zero ability to scale my damage up, since I'd be doing chip damage without it. After death abusing to Darkseid, I collect collect items for Kairi, destroy Riku in the race, and defeat Darkseid with a Keyblade. I then arrive in Traverse Town where I need to defeat 5 shadows to spawn Leon, die to Leon, and then pick up the Mithril and Elixir in the green room. I need a lot of synth items for the latter part of the run so that I can synthesize the Ultima weapon, along with the rest of the synth items. I'll also be saving as often as I can so that if I die anywhere I can reload to the nearest save and avoid pressing continue. I then proceed to defeat Guard Armor using many many well-timed physical attacks. Goofy gives me dodge roll, Donald gives me the fire spell, and we're now able to activate blue trinities. Before leaving the world though, I need to complete some small errands. I get the postcard from the blue safe, get the pretty stone chest in the red room, and then do the waterway clip to talk to Leon early and get the Dalmatian chest. I then proceed to the third district for the blue trinity, use fire on the fire door, and get the blue trinity in the magician's study. And now I can finally leave to the world map. Before going on my journey, I open up the gummy menu. In this game, the armor you can equip on the gummy ship actually slows you down. So I strip the gummy ship of all the parts and add a cockpit, one engine, and one gun. After saving the ship, we get our first trophy, the Customizer Trophy. My first destination is Olympus Coliseum. On the way there, I need to be wary of any blueprints that might show up. I need 30 unique gummy blueprints by the end of the speedrun, and also need to farm as many kills as possible. After doing some of Phil's training, we get an early thunder spell, which will help us for the rest of the early game. Next, I go to Deep Jungle and die to Sabor to trigger the cutscene faster. After meeting up with Jane, I get a Mithril Shard in the tent, get the Dalmatian in the Hippo's Lagoon and in the Vines area, get the Blue Trinity in Climbing Trees, and the Blue Trinity in the Camp, which gives us some more Dalmatians. Then I proceed as normal, defeating the Power Wild, Sabor, and Mr. Shussy Baka himself. We're then yeeted up to the Waterfall Cavern, which I get all of the chests from on the way up to the Keyhole. Completing the world gets me the Member of the Tribe trophy. I also get the ability to activate Red Trinities, and defeating Clayton gives me the Cure spell. Next up is Wonderland. After meeting the Queen of Hearts, we need to collect one piece of evidence to progress the story. I also grab the blue trinity right next to it while I'm there, and also pick up the Dalmatian's chest that is up top. Then, before presenting the card soldier with the evidence, I open and close Jiminy's journal to trigger a text box glitch, which saves a bit of time on the English version of the game. After destroying the crank tower, I get big in the lotus forest and push the big rock for later. I then head to the tea party garden to collect an elixir for my unbirthday, light some lamps in the bazaar room, and defeat Trickmaster. Sealing the keyhole gets us the rabbit hole trophy. On the way to Traverse Town, I need to get a score of 80 or higher, which earns me the test pilot trophy. I get the blue trinity at the start of the first district, then put out the candles to get a defense up from the chest. Then I get the blue trinity, which gets me a postcard, and then I go to the item shop and get this hidden postcard from the ceiling fan. I then need to sell most of the items I collected to Sid, so that I have enough money to buy a fire G and haste G. I then complete the visit as usual, collecting Simba along the way and buying the gun gummy parts, after which I add those gummy parts to my ship and then proceed to Agrabah. The Fire G is a bigger engine, and the Haste G allows you to hold the square button to boost whenever the meter is full. Now that I'm in Agrabah, I save Aladdin by clearing some Bandit Heartless with Simba. While unlocking the keyhole to the Pot Centipede fight, I drop straight down onto a Blue Trinity and barely manage to activate it while the Heartless are spawning. I defeat Pot Centipede without any problems, but on the Tigerhead fight, I get extremely unlucky and get killed by some random lasers and a fireball 
recall from the Fat Bandit Heartless, which loses me over a minute. This is definitely going to make it harder to get sub 10 hours, but I continue with hope in my heart. Man, that sounded really cheesy. I do end up beating Tiger Head second try and proceed through the world. I collect a mithril in the underground area, touch the jewel to open a secret passage for later, and collect the torn page in the dark chamber. I then get the blue trinity and attack the pillar to unlock the treasure room. In the treasure room, I collect a mithril shard, dalmatians, and a defense up and then get the Red Trinity. With the help of Aladdin and Goofy, I defeat the first Jafar fight by forcing him into his magic bubble, which allows me to combo him for much longer. And I defeat Genie Jafar by attacking the lamp and using blizzards on Jafar when he's close enough. Defeating Jafar upgrades me to Fyra and Blizzara, gives me access to green trinities, and leaving the world gets me the magic lamp trophy. I then take the bottom route on the world map and fly to Monstro. At the start of Monstro, I head over to Chamber 3 for some goodies. I need to clear these enemies and then I pick up a Dalmatian's chest, jump across to the other side and get a Flare G and Osmos G. More on those later. I then proceed to Chamber 6 where I collect a torn page on this green platform and then I jump to this Dalmatian's chest so that I can open it before the enemies finish spawning in. That's because in this game you're unable to open chests while your command menu is red. I then go to Chamber 5 and do the same thing, jumping forward to the blue trinity so I can activate it before the enemy spawn. I then go to Chamber 4 and with the scale damage I get from EXP0, I defeat Parasite Cage. Now that I have access to High Jump, I equip it and also unequip EXP0 so that I can start my level grinding process. In Monstrous Throat, there are special Heartless that can spawn here called Rare Truffles, where the goal is to juggle them in the air and prevent them from touching the ground. The more you juggle them, the more EXP they give you. You can juggle a Rare Truffle up to 100 times, which nets you 5,050 EXP. They can also drop Elixirs, Mystery Goo, Shiitake Ranks, and Matsutake ranks, which I will definitely be needing for later. This area is actually the hardest place in the game to juggle them, but if I can manage to juggle one of them 100 times, I can get an early head start on my EXP heading into Halloween Town, and I can also unlock an extra bar of MP, which is very useful for the unchanging armor trophy. I end up doing this successfully, get the blue trinity, and defeat Parasite Cage one last time. Beating Monstro unlocks the stop spell and gets me the Honest Soul Trophy. Hey, remember when I opened up that secret passage in Agrabah? Well, now that I have high jump, I'm able to get up there and then touch another jewel to open the secret compartment, which has some Dalmatians and a Haste 2G. I then leave the world and equip Flare G, a more powerful engine, Haste 2G, a more powerful booster, and Osmos G, which allows you to flick the right analog stick to suck in loot like a magnet. I then warp to deep jungle and fly to Wonderland, making sure to get 120 score or more. I land in Wonderland for a quick pit stop, getting this green trinity, and then I warp to Traverse Town and fly back to Wonderland. But this time I need to haste five times without taking damage. Doing this successfully earns me the Veteran Pilot Trophy. Next I warp to Olympus Coliseum. I make my way around the Coliseum gates, putting out the fires with Blazara, grabbing the blue trinities, which gets me another set of Dalmatians and a Mithril Shard. I grab the green trinity Mithril and putting out the last fire makes a hidden chest appear, which is the Holy G. This is the strongest gummy engine in the entire game and takes up a lot of space. Finally, I head my way back to Monstro for my last pit stop, grabbing the Water Gleam Gem, a Blue Trinity, and some Dalmatians, before finally heading to Halloween Town. At the start of Halloween Town, I save the game and return to the title screen so that there's a higher chance for rare truffles to spawn in this world. I get this power up chest in the guillotine square, then proceed to Dr. Finkelstein's lab, which has a torn page hidden in the bookshelf. Then I proceed through the world some more, getting the forget-me-not and the jack-in-the-box. After that I can go fight Lock, Shock, and Barrel, but before that I'm going to juggle some more rare truffles. To save as much time as possible, it is important that I can juggle every single rare truffle here to 100 without letting any of them fall. I get very lucky and the rare truffles spawn here on the first try, which is already a huge relief for me. Unfortunately I let one of the truffles fall very early, but I successfully juggle the other three to max score. I've now gained two more bars of MP and proceed to lock, shock, and barrel using blizzards and freezing them to death. I save the game once more and go back to the title screen, then head back to the rare truffle spawn to juggle some more. This time it only takes me two tries to spawn them, which is still really nice, and I successfully juggle the first three to 100 and juggle the last one to 55 before I accidentally drop the combo. At this point I'm at level 41 and I need to be at level 43 before leaving Halloween Town. I proceed 
proceed to fight Oogie and then defeat him again when he turns into a house. Defeating Oogie Manor gives me the gravity spell and leaving the world unlocks the Pumpkin Prince trophy. I need to re-enter the world again to juggle two more rare truffles so that my level is high enough for Neverland. Neverland's first visit is very simple. I head to the Green Trinity, go up the ladder, and fight Antisora. Because my physical damage is very low here, I try to incorporate some fires whenever I can. Defeating Antisora gives me the Kira spell. I get the Dalmatian's chest behind me before heading down the latch to fight Hook. Fight off some Heartless and then loop Captain Hook with the stop spell and some air combos. Defeating Hook gives me the Ars Arcanum ability, which will be very useful later on in the run. Then I need to hit the hand on the clock tower a few times, which reveals the keyhole. Sealing the keyhole and leaving the world earns me the Pixie Dust trophy. Now that the end game timer is past two hours, I can come back to the clock tower for the two o'clock door, which gives me another power up. Power-ups are especially useful right now since I can't equip keyblades or accessories to increase my strength. Now I can go to the Fairy Godmother and showing her the Water Gleam Gem gives me access to Dumbo, which I'll be using for a really cool trick later. Then I save warp to the accessory shop and get the Green Trinity, unlocking the Synthesis shop, and I pick up the Mithril Shard, Dalmatians, and Postcard. Why do these Moogles even have Dalmatians trapped in the shop? Next I go to the second district and get another Postcard, and then I make my way up to the Red Trinity by the bell. I use Ars Arcanum to quickly kill all of the Mage Heartless, activate the Red Trinity, and ring the bell three times to make Traverse Town's keyhole appear. Now for opposite armor. For opposite armor to die, I have to kill all of his limbs first, and then go for the main body. I block his attack at the start and use Ars Arcanum to quickly destroy his arm. I then try to block his second attack, but my guard whiffs because he aims for Donald instead of Sora. Opposite armor unfortunately splits apart, which loses me about 20 seconds, because I have to wait for him to put himself together again before I'm able to get his HP down to zero. I eventually beat the boss, giving me the defensive arrow spell. After fighting Oppo, I climb up to the roof to get to the third district balcony, which has a postcard hidden in the corner. After that, I go to Geppetto's house to grab a postcard and the Wishing Star Keyblade. I'm not going to be using this Keyblade, but I need every Keyblade in the game for one of the trophies. I then climb up to the accessory shop roof for another postcard and leave the world through the accessory shop, after which I get the Where the Bells Toll trophy. I can now proceed to Hollow Bastion, and you can proceed to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the video. And doing so helps this video get out to more viewers and gets me closer to the 100,000 subscriber trophy that totally exists in this game that I'm totally not making up right now. Hollow Bastion is my favorite world in this game, and boy is there a lot of stuff to do. First off, did you know that you can freeze the bubbles? By turning the bubble into a platform, I can get the Stalmation chest. I then get my Keyblade stolen and get stuck with Beast and head down to the underground passage, where I freeze another bubble for a very hidden Dark Matter chest. I then command Beast to break this rock for later. After activating the switch to the castle gates, I head my way over to Riku, who I defeat by using some air combos. I then need to go to the library, and while we'd only put a few books in the right places for the any percent run, in Plat we have to put all of the books in the right spots. And the only reason we do all of this work is for one measly Dalmatian's chest. Then I get all of the emblem pieces, and before putting them in the door, there's an AP up that I grab here in this very well-hidden area. You gotta admit, KH1 has some really cool secrets. After killing a defender in the next room, I change the direction of the elevator and make my way up for an Orichalcum chest. I then go out to the castle gates, despawn some enemies, and get another Orichalcum and more Dalmatians. Afterwards, I go to the big elevator and knock out some wizards and get the blue trinity afterwards for two cottages and a megalixer. In the next room after the lift stop, there is another Orichalcum chest, so I get that as well. At the high tower of Hollow Bastion, there are these moving platforms that you can change by hitting these switches. However, if you drop down here and glide to underneath the platform, there's a secret entrance to the lift stop. I go here to collect a very special accessory called the Royal Crown, which adds two bars of MP to your total magic. This will be especially useful later. Then I make my way up to the high tower and summon Dumbo. By floating up to this platform and dismissing Dumbo at the right time, Sora gets just enough height to grab the ledge, skipping the platform puzzle entirely and saving a decent chunk of time. I can now make my way to the castle chapel where Maleficent resides. For this boss fight, I use some really cool tech called Damage Storage, where by equipping EXP 0 and doing a regular combat finisher, my magic and summons receive a big damage increase, so long as I don't do another attack afterwards.
afterwards. For this fight specifically, I do a finisher and then use the stop magic to put her in place. With damage storage applied, Maleficent is stopped much longer than she normally would be, and I can loop her until she dies. However, in this run, I mess up the loop and she summons some Defender Heartless and then vanishes, so I have to chase her down and then kill her the hard way. This probably loses me about 40 seconds or so, but aside from that Tiger Head death and this fight, this run has been pretty decent so far. Thankfully, I'm able to loop Dragon Maleficent afterwards with no problems at all. Now, you might be thinking that I'm going to fight Riku Ansem now. However, when you beat Riku Ansem, the battle level of most worlds increases by a lot, making it take longer to defeat even the most basic Heartless. Therefore, my goal now is to finish Atlantica, some early Olympus Cups, and do as much world cleanup as I can before I fight Riku Ansem, to avoid any extra hassle from the increased battle levels. Now, let's go to Atlantica. Atlantica is actually a pretty short world in this category, and even has the craziest trick you'll ever see in this game. Thanks to the low battle level, I clear these sea neons easily by using Blizzard. In the next room, I pick up a free elixir from the clam while being cautious of the enemy spawn triggers. On the way to the palace, I also get this white trinity which contains an aura calcum, and I get another free elixir from this clam down below. Now it's time for the hypest trick in the game. I make my way to the undersea gorge and skip the dialogue text as quickly as possible and then quickly swim to where the dolphin spawns, and by grabbing the dolphin's tail and letting go immediately, I can clip out of bounds and push the giant chest from below. This saves me a lot of time as I don't need to go around the intended way by using the dolphin to get to the sunken ship normally. After pushing the chest from the hole, I go to Ariel's Grotto, where there is a torn page that I'm required to collect. After some cutscenes, I'm able to go straight to the sunken ship, since I've created a shortcut to it. Inside the ship, I get a mithril from this clam and a hidden mithril shard chest, before meeting up with a very cute, friendly, and completely harmless shark. He just wanted to say hello. With the crystal trident in hand, I go to Ariel's grotto, collecting an orichalcum from the giant chest on the way there. After Ariel's father decides he wants to be a dickhead and destroy the crystal trident I worked so hard to obtain, we need to kill one sheltering zone outside of the grotto for a Jiminy's journal entry. After backtracking to the palace, I also kill an aqua tank on the way to the sunken ship for the same reason. Before I can access the entrance to Ursula's lair, I need to get rid of this shark by using some physical hits and stop spells. After after that, we can examine the switch here and open the entrance. We then head our way over to Ursula after stocking up on some MP items and quickly kill Ursula by using fires on the cauldron and some thunders and Ariel's really broken spiral wave attack on Ursula. By defeating Ursula, we get the mermaid kick ability and can go to the giant Ursula arena, except not yet. Now is the prime time for me to get the stop arts from the white mushrooms which can spawn inside of the sunken ship. Before going to the white mushroom spawn, I go back into Ursula's lair one time, use fire on this weird urchin looking thing, and then get a mithril from the chest that falls. There's a bit of RNG involved with the white mushroom spawn because whether they spawn or not is random, but I thankfully am able to spawn them in just four attempts. Now I just have to use the stop spell on them three times when the time is right, and they drop the stop arts for me. This mushroom is really nice to me and does the stop pose three times in a row. Damn. Perfect. Now I can go to Giant Ursula and give her a nice smacking by interchanging a full combo and a damage storage stop until she dies. By defeating Ursula, we get the Thundara spell, after which we seal the keyhole and leave the world to obtain the Master of the Seas trophy. With the extra power that I have from the Thundara spell, I now make my way to Olympus Colosseum. There are three cups available here before defeating Riku Ansem, so it's really fast to complete these while the battle level is low. Throughout this visit, I'll be getting a whopping five new trophies. Upon entering OC, I get the White Trinity in the middle of the Colosseum Gate, which contains one of Donald's best staffs. I then unequip EXP 0 and do preliminaries. These are very simple. Just stand still at the start of each round and cast one Thundara to clear the entire wave, and use two Thundaras on the last round before Cloud. For the Cloud fight, I just brute force the fight with Ars Arcanum and defeat him very quickly this way. After this, we need to fight Cerberus, and this fight is just an easy stop loop to get the job done. Cloud gives us Sonic Blade afterwards, but sadly, we never use it in the speedrun. <laughs> After leaving the world and coming back, I can finally start completing the cups. First up is Phil Cup, and all I have to do is spam Thunders and Blizzards. Completing this cup gives me the Novice Hero Trophy. Then I have to do the Pegasus Cup. I basically just do more Thunders and Blizzards and then use air combos on Yuffie and Leon. I like to take care of Yuffie first so that she can't heal Leon. Completing the Pegasus Cup earns me the Artisan Hero Trophy. Next up, I actually do the solo version of the Pegasus Cup, and this not only gets me some extra EXP, but I also get an Aura Calcum here, which I need in order to synth Ultima Weapon later. Doing the solo Pegasus 
Pegasus Cup gets me the Supreme Soloist Trophy. I also need to do the Pegasus Cup Time Trial because it gives me a Dark Matter that I really need later. Doing this gives me the Time Attacker Trophy. It's finally time for me to do Hercules Cup. I need to equip EXP0 again so I can do scaled up damage. Most of the rounds in Hercules Cup are just more Blizzard spam, but for Cloud I tried to do a simple air combo loop, only to be rudely interrupted by my party members. Ideally, you'd want them to die quickly here so that they can't mess things up, but they somehow survive throughout most of the fight. Unfortunately, my Hercules fight isn't that much better. You're supposed to loop him here with damage storage stop spells, but he unfortunately immediately breaks out of my combos, and I have no choice but to fight him the slow way, by just hitting him with air combos and dodging his various attacks. It's safe to say that I probably lost 2-3 minutes in the Hercules Cup, so I'll need to make up some time later. Defeating the Hercules Cup earns me the Hero of the Colosseum Trophy. Beating Hercules also unlocks the Yellow Trinity, and while I could seal the keyhole to Olympus Colosseum right now, I choose not to do this yet because sealing every keyhole in the game makes the long, deep dive secret ending play during the credits. However, because I don't seal the keyhole in Olympus, I'll get a shorter teaser of the secret ending instead, saving me a good chunk of time. Next I need to do some cleanup in Agrabah. The first thing I do is go to the storage and pick up the green trinity. This chest has an AP up which will be useful to me later. After this I head over to the Cave of Wonders where I get the Ifrit belt from the white trinity. Ifrit belt increases your strength by a lot and comes with fire resistance. I then do some very specific movement here with glide in order to avoid enemy spawns and I get this Dalmatians chest that's sitting on this platform. Then in the next room I glide through these two lit torches to avoid enemy spawns and safely get to the yellow trinity. This trinity does absolutely nothing to help me but I need it for the journal entry. Lastly, I go to the treasure room and get gravity arts from the white mushrooms that can spawn here. Unfortunately, it takes me 7 tries to get the white mushrooms to spawn, losing me some time. I'm then able to cast gravity on a mushroom 3 times in a row to obtain a gravity arts. After that, I leave the world and go to Wonderland for some more cleanup. When I go to Wonderland, I dock in the Queen's Castle and get the Dalmatians chest on the upper platform to the right side of the room. Then I head to the Lotus Forest to collect 3 different white mushroom arts in one sweep. I need to get the Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder Arts all in one go before the mushrooms despawn, so I need to have very good RNG here. The first mushroom gives me three thunder poses relatively quickly, and as soon as the third thunder hits, I make my way to the second mushroom and leave the thunder arts on the floor to pick up later. On the second mushroom, I get okay RNG and get it to drop blizzard arts, and I hurry my way to the last mushroom to get fire arts. This mushroom wastes a lot of my time, but thankfully I am just barely able to get out three fires for fire arts, so I have successfully gotten all three in one sweep and I don't have to come back. I can then easily do some cleanup in the Lotus Forest, now that there aren't any enemies spawned here. First I get the camping set from the Blue Trinity, then I get the Oracalcum chest from outside the top Tea Party Garden entrance. In the Tea Party Garden, I pick up more Dalmatians, a Mithril, and a Dark Matter. I then head to the Bizarre Room entrance above the Tea Party Garden entrance, light the first lamp for a defensive chest, light the second lamp, and jump into the painting. I then use a Thunder on the Pink Flowers for another set of Dalmatians and get the Lady Luck Keyblade from the White Trinity. With all of that collected, I can now leave for Traverse Town. For my next Traverse Town visit, I get the Red Trinity in the first district and get the Dalmatians chest right when I enter the alley. I I then head my way to the Dalmatian's house and turn in the puppies that I have found so far. This gets me the last torn page that I need for the Hundred Acre Wood. I then go to the Seeker Waterway and get the Aura Calcum from the White Trinity, and then make my way up to the Magician's Study. It is finally time to play with the bear. At Pooh's house, I hit the chimney, which dislodges a Mega Aether from the chimney and into his house. I then look inside of Pooh's medicine cabinet like a nosy person and steal his precious elixir. Now for the minigames. My goal for all of these minigames is to reach a certain high score in order for Owl to reward Sora with a cheer ability at the end of the world. For the first minigame, we have the Honey Tree. The requirement here is to get 100 points or more by simply letting Pooh eat enough honey. The platforming here can be rather tricky, but because of my experience with this game, I am able to do it very easily. <laughs> Our next minigame is at Rabbit's House, and the goal here is to get 150 points or more. This is by far the easiest minigame, and nobody should have any trouble with it. After that is the Pooh Swing. This game is evil, and requires 
requires me to fail the minigame on purpose in order to get a score of 40 or more. And then on my second attempt, I get 25 score, which allows Pooh to find Eeyore's tail. Sora, what the heck are you doing, bro? Next minigame is Tigger's Giant Pot. This minigame is rather difficult because I need to break the pot in just under 30 seconds. Despite my terrible reach with Kingdom Key, I'm able to break the pot in just two swings. Before I do the last minigame, I am also required to collect every single nut in this room for Owl. The really unfortunate thing is that I can only hold one nut at a time, so I have to backtrack a lot to Owl. There are also some other useful things to collect here. First I go inside of the stump that the giant pot was blocking and get an AP up. Then I break this log and get a mithril that is sitting inside. I then jump up to this nearby chest for a mithril shard and get this nut for Owl and get this shield 2G from this tree. More on that later. Now I proceed to collect the rest of the nuts for Owl. While I'm doing this, I also get the dark matter chest that is hidden on this platform. As a reward for my nutty gameplay, Owl gives me a power up, defense up, mithril shard, AP up, and an aura calcum. Our last mini game is hide and seek, and this one requires me to find all of Pooh's friends in under five minutes, which is incredibly easy, but this is a speed run and I want to go way faster than that. By talking to Owl at the same time that Pooh is walking to the flowers here, I'm able to warp back to where Pooh is without having to spend extra time platforming back up to where he is, and I can also do this funny glitch where Sora can slide around while Pooh is getting lifted. I end up finishing this minigame in two minutes and two seconds, which is a pretty fast time. By completing all of the pages, I receive the Nature Spark gem a stop upgrade, EXP ring, and the Pooh's friend trophy. After I get kicked out of the book, I re-enter one more time, go to Pooh's house, and light the fire for a mithril. Then I talk to Owl, and he gives me the cheer ability. I hate you. After that, I leave the book, get Mushu and Bambi from Fairy Godmother, get the Yellow Trinity, AP Up, and Dalmatian's chest from outside the Magician's study, and leave the world. I enter the gummy menu real quick and put on the Shield 2G, which allows me to take four hits without taking damage. Our next destination is Deep jungle. The first thing I do is land in the tunnel area and get the green trinity in the treetops room. Can someone please tell me whose idea it was to place a green trinity on top of these green leaves? After collecting the mithril shard from the green trinity, it's time for me to start the jungle slider minigame. It surprises me how many people don't even know that this minigame exists. Upon starting the minigame, I receive the minigame maniac trophy. The way this minigame works is you have to collect all 10 fruits in the section that you are in, and then after hearing a jingle and getting an item, you can pause the game and press restart to start over. During your next pass through, a new area will be open and you have to collect 10 more fruit in the next area to unlock the third area and so on for a total of 50 fruit. Unfortunately, you have to repeat these sections, which can be a slog for a lot of people. However, during the Platinum Trophy speedrun, I only have to play through the third room for the Dark Matter reward as there is no trophy for completing all of Jungle Slider. After getting the Dark Matter from the minigame, I select Quit on the pause menu and get transported to the Clayton Battle Arena, and I proceed straight to the top of the Waterfall Cavern to collect a White Trinity and collect an Oracalcum. I then head to the camp, and before leaving the world, I can obtain the Cure Arts from the White Mushrooms, and any other arts I may have missed. Thankfully, I'm only missing Cure Arts in this run, so I pick it up quickly and leave. Next up is Halloween Town. I go to the Guillotine Square and collect a Dalmatian's Chest and an Elixir in side of this giant skull. I then go to the graveyard and collect the arrow arts by casting arrow on a white mushroom three times in a row whenever I see it spinning. I then go to Curly Hill, kill some enemies, and go through this secret door that's only unlocked after you have sealed the keyhole. In this room, I collect the Dalmatian's chest and the Dark Matter chest. After this, I backtrack to the guillotine gate and leave for Hollow Bastion. In Hollow Bastion, I dock in the waterway and get the blue trinity from the room that I opened earlier with Beast's help. Then I leave the world and warp to Neverland. I dock in the first room, kill some pirates, Pirates and collect a Dalmatian's chest in the hidden area up here. Then I unlock this door by activating the Yellow Trinity, kill the enemies with thunder, and collect every chest which contains an arrow upgrade, a dark matter, an ore calcum, and some Dalmatians. I then save warp to the clock tower because it is now past 4 hours in game, which gives me access to the 4 o'clock door giving me a free power-up. This concludes all of the cleanup for now, and I make my way back to Hollow Bastion to finally take on Riku Ansem. Before fighting Ransom, I used all of my
my stat boosts that I've accumulated, unequip EXP 0 so I don't miss out on all the EXP the boss will give me, and I put on tech boost, cheer, and hurricane blast. Obviously I saved the game here too because as we all know, this boss can kill you very easily. Oh the trauma. Riku Ansem can actually be pretty neat in the speedrun. In order to kill him as quickly as possible, I do a very precise air combo loop to keep him infinitely staggered. In the first phase, he can do one of two different retaliations at random, so I basically just need to react, but after he powers up, he consistently retaliates with his famous ha 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 attack, which allows me to maintain the loop consistently until the fight is over. After defeating Riku Ansem, I find out that I am now almost 6 minutes ahead of my personal best. This run is going really well so far, and it would be a shame if anything tried to hold this pace back. We then have to get a magical hug from Kairi to restore Sora's body, and we get immediately taken back to Traverse Town where I finally mail all of the 8 postcards that I have collected, and in turn I receive a Mithril Shard, Mithril, and an Aura Calcum. I can then progress the world by talking to Sid, getting Oathkeeper from Kairi, which gets me the Oathkeeper trophy, and then I talk to Sid one more time before leaving the world. Now I need to take an alternate path to get to Hollow Bastion, but what most people don't know is about halfway through the gummy route you can actually quit out to the world map and be able to warp to Hollow Bastion. Landing in the Rising Falls, I swap out Donald for Beast and equip Lucky Strike on Sora. Lucky Strike is an ability that increases the drop rate of synth items and weapon drops, and is incredibly useful for the second half of this run. You won't always have Lucky Strike at this point, but because my EXP was really good, I am able to equip it earlier than usual. I proceed to the castle gates, spawn a singular wizard, roll back to this platform and summon Dumbo so that I can use him to gain enough height to grab this ledge, which skips having to do some backtracking through the castle itself. I also use Dumbo in the same area as before in the last visit. Before proceeding, to fight Behemoth, I equip EXP 0 again because I'll be using damage storage to get through the fight as quickly as possible. Since I got Aurora from Neverland earlier, the spell now deals damage to nearby enemies that are touching it. For Behemoth, I can apply damage storage to Aurora to deal more damage than my regular attacks could do on their own. By defeating Behemoth, we get an Omega Arts, which is a great strength accessory that we can use later. I also get my final fire upgrade from the Princesses of Heart, unequip EXP 0 again, and leave through the safe point, which gets me the end of the world trophy. This trophy name always confuses me. Before going to end of the world, I go to the Rising Falls and get the White Trinity, completely ignoring the chest because Thundagaji is pretty useless to me. I then go to the library and talk to Aerith three times to get four Ansem reports and the Kiraga spell. After that, I make my way up the stairs, watch an unskippable cutscene, and talk to Belle for the Divine Rose Keyblade. This Keyblade is godlike. Don't forget it. Now I can finally go to end of the world. By flying to end of the world, I have now flown to every single world on the world map, and I am rewarded with the top gun trophy. I heard the new movie is pretty good. The first couple fights are pretty easy. We just use arrow and gravity to kill the invisibles and clear out the angel stars with a fully charged Simba Roar. Then with EXP 0 equipped, I defeat Behemoth with gravities and Aurora damage storage. I unequip EXP 0 again and get the chest at the very top of the giant crevice, which is a dark matter, and the blue chest near the bottom, which contains Donald's meteor strike weapon. Since that is my 100th chest that I've collected, I obtain the treasure hunter trophy. Next I go through the world terminus, and I have to clear the Heartless Waves in the Olympus Coliseum portal because I have not sealed the keyhole in Olympus yet. To do this, I just clear every single wave using Simba's powerful roars. I also make a quick stop into the Neverland portal, which contains Goofy's mighty shield. I'm then required to enter the Hundred Acre Wood portal, and I get a free Mega Elixir from the chest. I clear the Invisibles in the Hollow Bastion portal, equip EXP 0, and proceed to fight Chernabog. This fight is very easy. I just do a full combo on his head, land on his bicep, and summon Mushu and look at that health bar. This is definitely one of the fights of all time. Defeating Chernabog gives me Super Glide, which is the fastest form of movement in the entire game. I now have to fight yet another Behemoth, for which I use Aurora and Gravities again. Immediately after defeating the Behemoth, I Super Glide to the Emblem Door, and this allows me to open the pause menu when the command menu turns blue. I unequip EXP 0 and I use a Cottage and give Sora a Mega Elixir just in case. The first wave of enemies is just a bunch of Dark Balls, and for this wave I summon Mushu and kill each Dark Ball one by one with Mushu's Fire Breath attack. I then dismiss Mushu as the next wave is spawning, and use a well-timed stop spell to stop all 
all of the invisibles in place and use gravities to kill them. After the last invisible dies, I quickly summon Simba and kill the rest of the waves with fully charged roars. Now I can enter final rest and I equip EXP 0 and proceed to do the final fights. Ansem 1 is super easy just like Chernobog. I do a full combo and decimate him with Mushu. After Ansem 1, I fully stock Sora, Donald, and Goofy with a bunch of elixirs and mega elixirs. Darkseid 3 is a pretty cool fight in this category. I cast Aurora and do some air combos and at a certain point I get up on his arm and spam Fyraga on his body while the damage storage glitch is buffing both the arrow damage and the fire damage at the same time. For Ansem 2, I utilize Aurora and some air combos to deplete his HP. Unfortunately, Ansem uses his desperation move one time and wastes about 20 seconds, and I also have some really close calls and nearly die. What? but I managed to beat him successfully. Ansem 3 is relatively simple. I do a full combo and then use damage storage Fyraga from a distance while avoiding lasers and using elixirs when needed. For the Shadows core, I cast Arrow and spam Gravity and then destroy the core. For the Artillery, I cast Arrow and use Gravities and Fires. For the Dark Boss core, I also use Gravities and Fires and then destroy the core. For the Face Fight, I use more damage storage Aurora and Fires. Next up is the Invisibles core where I use two perfectly timed stop spells to keep all of the enemies in place, and use gravities to quickly kill them. Finally, we have the final boss, Ansem 4. At the start of this fight, I command Donald and Goofy to go towards Ansem, I turn the camera to the left to spawn the lasers from a specific angle, land on the small platform, and do a precise jump over the second set of lasers to do a full combo on Ansem, land on the ground, and summon Mushu. I then finish the fight with damage storage Mushu. This strat is much harder than it looks, and in hindsight, it was incredibly stupid of me to go for this trick, because had I died here, I would have needed to start the final boss rush from the very first Ansem fight. By defeating Ansem in under 15 hours, I obtained the Speedster Trophy. Keep in mind it's only been 4 hours and 42 minutes so far, and I have done so much, yet I have much more to do. I now have to sit through the long credits to get some of the other trophies, but this gives me time to grab a bite to eat so that I'm not hungry for the next 5 hours. After the credits are all finished, I receive the Novice Player, Final Mix Master, Crowd player, undefeated, and unchanging armor trophies. This marks the halfway point of the run. If you've made it this far into the video, leave a comment down below. Now that I've beaten the game without changing accessories, I can finally reload the save that I made in Final Rest, and I equip the Lady Luck Keyblade, Ray of Light, and Royal Crown. I also give Goofy EXP Ring, which stays on him for a while, because I need to maximize all of the EXP I can get for that level 100 trophy while I'm doing other stuff. My first objective right now is to do everything that I can in Hollow Bastion, so I warp to the world and dock in the Castle Chapel. I can now enter the secret portal to fight the unknown boss, who a lot of you might recognize from other Kingdom Hearts games. Many people find this fight to be very challenging on their casual playthroughs, but I'm going to do a very simple loop here. First off, I need to summon any summon that takes away my party members, but gives me free control over Sora to do regular attacks. This is important because halfway through the fight, Unknown can cast Doom on you and make your command menu glitch out, which can easily kill you. However, with Donald and Goofy removed from the party, Unknown will never do this attack. After summoning Simba, I look for one opening to combo the boss and stagger him with a finisher. Once he is staggered, I can cast Gravity, jump over his orb attack, and do another combo to stagger him. This loop is quite easy to learn, so I recommend you try this for yourself when fighting him. At a certain HP gate, Unknown does his desperation move and shoots out a bunch of lasers. I immediately dismiss Simba so that Donald can heal me and Goofy can throw me some MP, after which I summon Bambi. Bambi in this case is useful because it gets rid of the party and drops a bunch of MP so that I can maintain the gravity loop until the end. By defeating Unknown, I earn the He Who Doesn't Exist trophy, and I also obtain the EXP necklace, which you can bet your ass I'll be putting on right away. Now for the annoying part. Every world in KH1, except for Atlantica and Hundred Acre Wood, have a special Heartless that I need to defeat for a journal entry, but also drops a special synth item specific to that Heartless. In Hollow Bastion, that enemy is the Stealth Soldier. These enemies can be quite difficult to deal with and also have a random spawn rate, so they can lose you a lot of time if you're unlucky. Moreover, the synth drops are not 100% guaranteed to drop every single time you kill one of these. Stealth soldiers are annoying because they're invisible, very fast, and hit very hard on proud. By utilizing the stop and gravity spell as well as Ars Arcanum, I can defeat these enemies with relative ease and collect a total of 6 energy stones. I also pick up every chest in the Grand Hall, which contain a Dark Matter, a set of Dalmatians, and the Oblivion Keyblade. Unfortunately, two of the stealth soldiers didn't drop anything, so I ended 
ended up losing 53 seconds to my best segment here. My next world to 100% is Agraba. I first dock in Aladdin's house, make sure that EXP0 is equipped, and I talk to the carpet, which takes me to our second super boss, Kurt Zisa. At the start of the fight, Kurt Zisa immediately seals my magic. However, I can still use Sora's limits, so I attempt to destroy both orbs in his hands with R's Arcanum. Unfortunately, I get too greedy and suffer the consequences. Thankfully, I made a backup save in case this happened, so I don't have to redo any menu with it. This time, I successfully destroy both orbs, heal my party with a Mega Potion, and use Damage Storage Mushu to deal a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish the job with Mushu, so I have to chase the boss around and destroy its shield. After destroying the shield, I'm able to deplete his HP to zero. By defeating Kurtziza, I obtain the Sandy Blade Trophy. Next, I head out to the main street to get the Dark Matter and Mithril Chest, and then I head to the Palace Walls, where I need to collect eight Mithril Stones from Pot Scorpion. The way this fight works is simple. Reveal the Heartless by attacking the pot that he's hiding in, then bring his HP to zero, and there's a chance of him dropping the Mithril Stone that I need. I need to block his attack to make him vulnerable and then deal enough damage with Divine Rose. He can only take five attacks before he becomes invulnerable again, and unfortunately your party members can steal hits away from you, so it takes a bit of luck and finagling. If done right, you can kill him successfully in two cycles. One thing to mention, before fighting him, I push around all of the pots and destroy all of the ones that move. That's because these pots have a chance to drop a bonus mithril stone if I get lucky. And there's also a Dalmatian's chest in this room that I pick up too. Unfortunately, because of my death to Kurzisa, a silly death to Paw Scorpion, and some incredibly bad luck with my mithril stone drops, I end up losing almost five and a half minutes to this split. Thankfully, I'm still on pace to potentially get sub-10 hours. Next, I warp to end of the world for my next synth grind. I need five more gale drops from the Invisibles and Angel Stars for a total of eight gales, and I need four Stormy Stones from the Neo Shadows. You might be familiar with Neo Shadows in Cage 2, but the ones here are very different. To defeat a Neo Shadow, you must defeat every clone that shows up while avoiding death, and once there's one left, avoid getting grabbed and attack the Heartless from the center of the arena while it's coming out of the hole to attack. As for the Gales, I just opt to use Gravities and Strike Raid here to clear out the Heartless as quickly and safely as possible. Due to some rough RNG, I end up losing a minute and 46 seconds on this segment. Not all hope is lost though. After the short end of the world, grind, I make my way to Olympus Coliseum. I finally seal the keyhole by activating the Yellow Trinity, and I start the Hades Cup. Why exactly am I doing Hades Cup now, and not later when I'm stronger? Well, that's because Hades Cup gives us several magic upgrades, including Blizzaga and Thundaga. I will be using a lot, and I mean a lot, of Thundagas during the main synth grind. With Blizzaga, I can also get the Shiva Belt, which raises your max MP and comes with a summon boost. Quite frankly, there's not much that I want to talk about when it comes to Hades Cup, so I'll do a quick summary instead. I go through through to the behemoth fight for the blizzard upgrade, acquire and equip the shiva belt, and turn on exp0 for the remainder of the cup. During each match I do some magic and limit spam wherever appropriate, and after each boss I quit out and readjust my setup slightly and fill up on my hp and mp to prepare for the next 10 rounds. At one point I switch to a more strength based build with divine rose, and when I get to hades I do a full combo and kill him by casting aurora on myself and jumping into him so I can do a lot of damage with damage storage. Defeating hades gives me the storyteller trophy, which means I completed the Chronicle section of Jiminy's Journal. The Rock Titan fight is just a bunch of combo spam and Aurora spam, and by completing the Hades Cup, I get the Colosseum Champion trophy. After this, I do the Gold Cup, which features our next super boss, the Ice Titan. For this fight, I use a magic build, spam gravities at the start of the fight, and when Ice Titan is stunned, I do a full combo to set up damage storage. Then I back up and spam as many Fyragas as I can before he wakes up, and for the rest of the fight, I just block his ice to reflect it back to him and use more damage storage fires whenever I can. This fight is actually harder than it looks, but I finish it quicker than I ever have before. Defeating the Ice Titan earns me the Frosty Giant Trophy, and also gets me the Diamond Dust Keyblade, which will be incredibly useful later. After the boss fight, I head outside and get this Oracalcum that only appears after beating the Hades Cup, and then I leave the world, which finally gives me the Junior Hero Trophy. I played so well during this split that I saved over 3 minutes and got a new best segment. Now we're talking. My next destination is Neverland, and I can't say I'm super excited because it's time for the most boring fight in the entire game. That's right, I'm talking about Phantom. This whole fight is just a very drawn out color matching minigame. The heart in the middle can glow red for fire, blue for blizzard, and yellow for thunder, and white for physical attacks. I also need to cast stop on the clock after every two cycles so that Goofy doesn't get timed out. By defeating the Phantom, I get the Cloaked Shadow Trophy. And now the 
fun part begins. From this point on, I'll be summoning Bambi a lot. The way Bambi works is for every enemy you defeat, Bambi's charge meter will fill up. Once the meter fills up all the way, Bambi will drop either a healing item or a selection of synth items specific to the world that you're in. Unfortunately, this wimpy deer can decide to not drop what you want because it hates your guts, so he can either be my best friend or my worst enemy. My goal in Neverland is to get 13 spirit shards and 7 spirit gems from Bambi. Quite fitting numbers when you think about it. And I also need 6 dazzling stones from the Jet Balloon. Ugh, don't even get me started about that guy. Jet Balloon is a pesky special heartless. He's really fast and unpredictable, but the general idea is to use the stop spell on him and get Goofy to damage him as much as possible with Tornado. Jet Balloon can drop up to 2 dazzling stones at a time, or he can only drop 1. Not to mention, the dazzling stones can be really hard to catch, as they can completely vanish into the ocean if you fail to catch them. Unless something like this happens. Okay, wait. Wait. Oh! <laughs> So as you can probably tell, that leaves a lot of room for bad RNG to happen. During my sweep through Neverland, I also pick up a Dalmatian's chest from the White Trinity and an Aura Calcum chest way up here. In this run, my Jet Balloon luck was incredible. Where are you going? Huh? Thank god- oh! Six! We're done! That's so lucky! Unfortunately, the same thing cannot be said about my Bambi RNG. In fact, it was so bad that I ended up losing over two minutes by the time I get my final Spirit Shard draw. Next up on our synth grinding journey is Halloween Town. The goal here is to get a total of 11 power gems which Bambi can drop, and I also need 7 blazing stones from the Chimera Special Heartless. Chimera is pretty interesting. To defeat him, you basically just bring his HP to zero, and then deflect all of the gumballs that he shoots out at you. The more balls you deflect consistently, the higher chance he has of dropping blazing stones, and the quicker you can defeat him. During the synth grind, I pick up the Red Trinity Mithril Shard from the area where Oogie Manor once stood, as well as these chests that got relocated into this hole, which contains two ethers, a set of Dalmatians, an Aura Calcum, and a Mega Ether. I also get the White Trinity in Curly Hill, which contains another set of Dalmatians. Now, let's see how my luck is doing in Halloween Town. Yeah, so I got some trash luck with Bambi and some horrendous luck with my Chimera drops. I lost over six minutes of time to my best segment. At this point, I was very frustrated. Surely it could not get any worse than this. Still, I had some hope. My best possible time still clearly says I can get a run under 10 hours, so I decided to press on. Now that it's been 6 hours in game time, I make a quick pit stop to Neverland to open the 6 o'clock door, which contains a mithril. After this I warp to Monstro for our next super exciting synth grind. The goal here is to get 7 frost stones from the Grand Ghost Special Heartless, as well as 13 lucid gems that Bambi drops here. The Grand Ghost is the easiest Special Heartless in the game to farm, so long as you have the necessary items. The bigger the refill the item would normally give you, the more damage it does to the Grand Ghost, so naturally it one Mega Elixir kills the Grand Ghost in one hit. The Grand Ghost is also guaranteed to drop at least two Frost Stones at a time, and because of good RNG, I only had to kill the Grand Ghost a grand total of three times. I also make sure to get the Green Trinity in Monstro's Mouth, which contains a Mithril Shard, and the White Trinity in Chamber 6, which contains a Dark Matter. There's also a Mithril Chest in Chamber 6, another Mithril in Chamber 5, and a Dalmatian's Chest there as well. After picking up these Dalmatians, I get the Top Dog Trophy, meaning I now have all of the puppies. However, I'm gonna see how deep jungle grinding goes. And then I'll decide if I want to actually not finish. Because this is by far the worst monster I've ever had. This RNG is abysmal. Yeah, at this point I had almost no hope for this run getting a PB. After losing over 11 minutes to Bambi RNG and Monstro, it was time to go to Deep Jungle. Deep Jungle is probably the most tedious grind in this speedrun. For this world, there are a whopping five different synth items that I'm looking for. My first plan is to loop around the treehouse with Bambi in search of 12 Thunder Shards and 15 Thunder Gems. I also need seven Serenity Powers from the Pink Agaricus Special Heartless. How this enemy works is there will be three White Mushroom Heartless that are hiding in three different locations, and you have to search for them and unstop them by using the stop spell. After doing so successfully, the Pink Agaricus will spawn in the middle of the treehouse, and the goal is to use the stop spell and then do as many hits as possible before the enemy gets unstopped. To accomplish this, I cast Aurora on myself and I do a lot of Ragnaroks with some air combos in between. Very early into the Bambi grind, I finally get the Heartless Hunter Trophy, which means I've now killed over 2,000 
1,000 Heartless at this point. I also make sure to grab the Mithril chest on the boat here so I can use it for synthing later. Bambi was actually really nice to me here and dropped the Thunder items super quickly. The Pink Agaricus on the other hand was not spawning super often, but after a little bit of more back and forth I was able to get the rest of my Serenity powers within a decent time. This also happened. What? Here. I hate that spawn dude, that always happens when I get that spawn. Now with my treehouse grind done, I swap over to a strength build and start grinding in the bamboo thicket and cliffs area. My goal is to get 13 bright shards from the green requiem as well as 5 lightning stones from the black ballad special heartless. The black ballad is one of the more annoying ones for me. The way it works is it'll show you which of the 5 clones is the real one and then you have to hit it after all the clones stop mixing around. There's about a 10% chance of you getting a lucky lightning stone drop when you hit it to reveal the correct one and there is a 100% chance of getting one if you're able to pick out the real one four times before the time runs out. Ideally, I'd like to see at least one or two bonus drops because I'd hate repeating the minigame five times. With a little bit of trolling from the green requiems and one lucky bonus drop from the black balance, I finally finished the deep jungle grind and made up almost seven minutes. I'm still four minutes behind PB at this point, so I really need the rest of the run to go extremely well. Note that the best possible time is 9.57.03 now. If I want to sub 10, I'm going to have to play so close to my best segments. Oh, I almost forgot. You'd also want 10 Mystery Goo and 13 Power Shards at this point. I happen to already have the 10 Mystery Goo that I need since I did a lot of level grinding on Rare Truffles much earlier in the run, and the Bouncy Wilds dropped the Power Shards naturally during my Bambi grind. With Deep Jungle finally done and a little bit of hope restored, I set off to Wonderland. This time I put on a big MP build because I'm going to be utilizing more Thunders and Summons from here on out. The Wonderland Synth grind is actually very simple, but can be quite frustrating with the amount of bad RNG you can get. My goal for this world is to get 5 Fury Stones from the Giga Shadows and 37 Lucid Shards from the Normal Shadows, as well as 10 Frost Shards and 10 Frost Gems from Bambi. The Giga Shadows are the easiest Special Heartless to deal with, as all you have to do is go to the first Bizarre Room entrance before the Queen's Castle, clear all of the Normal Shadows with Thunder, and then summon Dumbo when the Big Shadows spawn. After that, you can simply spin around in a circle until all of the Giga Shadows are dead. After I get my 5 Fury Stones, I switch to summoning Bambi exclusively, and just keep leaving and coming back to the room to keep grinding. During the grind, I also make sure to grab the green trinity in the fireplace, and since this is the final trinity, I earn the best friend trophy. With some excellent RNG, I made back two minutes, and now I'm only two minutes behind PB. For my final synthesis grind, I head off to Traverse Town. My first course of action is to go into the item shop and sell the shiitake and matsutake rank that I got earlier from all of the mushroom heartless. Selling all of these gets me to 10,000 money, which earns me the from rags to riches trophy. I use this 10k money to purchase two aura calcums for later. I then head to the third district to get five power stones from the Sniper Wild Special Heartless. A lot of people have trouble with this enemy, but an easy strat to do is to space yourself a certain distance from where the waves spawn and just spam fires and blizzards. You can get all five power stones consistently in one cycle if you kill all five waves. Bro. Goodness. After that, I go to the Dalmatian's house and turn in the rest of the puppies, which gives me the Aeroga spell. On top of dealing damage to nearby enemies, Aeroga can also deflect most projectiles. We don't really see much use for Aeroga in this run, but it can add an extra layer of safety during the Hades Cup solo run and the time trial run. After visiting the Dalmatian's house for the last time, I start the second district synth grind. I'm looking for 12 blaze shards and 10 blaze gems from Bambi, 8 bright gems from the search ghosts, 3 power crystals from the wyverns, and 9 lucid gems from the Dark Balls. With that grind finished in no time, I finally start the synthesis process in the Moogle Shop. I start by synthesizing the first 18 items that are available to me, and I earn the first Synthesis, Synthesis Novice, and Synthesis Amateur trophies. The reason I started synthesizing things now, even though I don't have all the necessary items for Ultima Weapon, is because after synthesizing these 18 items, I get the Encounter Plus ability, which allows for enemies to respawn without needing to go two rooms away. This is extremely crucial for the next synth grind in the alley and the third district. In the alley, I need three shiny crystals from the wizards as well as the wizard's relic staff for Donald, since there's a trophy for getting all of Donald's weapons. The wizard's relic is extremely notorious in this speedrun as it is the single most rare drop in the entire game, with the base drop rate being 1 in 500 without any lucky strikes and 1 in 200 with all of the lucky strikes equipped. This weapon drop can lose you an entire hour if you get very unlucky, so let's see how this goes for me. Okay. Fine. 
Thankfully, I was able to get Wizard's Relic in about 20 visits to the alley, which is actually above average RNG for me. With that out of the way, I just have a few things to grind in the third district. I need four Bright Crystals from the Defenders, the Defender Shield for Goofy, and I need to grind Sora to level 90. Thankfully, the Defender Shield isn't nearly as scarce as the Wizard's Relic, so I'm able to get it without breaking a sweat. The level 90 grind takes about 40 minutes or so, but thankfully, through the power of editing, I'm able to let you guys skip through all of this torture that I had to subject myself do. With all of the synth drops, weapon drops, and level 90 completed, I make my way to the synth shop for the last time and finally synthesize the Ultima weapon, earning me the Synthesis Vet and Synthesis Master trophies. I then go to Merlin's place and obtain the Spellbinder, Dream Shield, and Dream Rod for all of my efforts. Because my Traverse Town grind was so good, I was now suddenly 1 minute and 23 seconds ahead of PB. Holy cow, sub 10 hours might actually be possible. After that, I fly to Wonderland and get 40 blocks along the way to get the Ace Pilot Trophy. I only have a few things left to do in this run. I need to get Donald and Goofy, save the Queen and save the King from the Hades Cup solo and time trial run, complete the collection of staffs and shields for Donald and Goofy, and get the last two Gummy Ship trophies. It's not really much I can say about Hades Cup. Because of how powerful I am, I just power my way through these with a billion elixirs and just mindlessly spamming magic and strike raid to get through everything. The really exciting part is the final boss of this run. Sephiroth. Remember struggling against Sephiroth as a kid and how many attempts it took you to beat him? Well, in this run, Sora is fucking broken. So I'll let this fight speak for itself. Pass. Okay, come on, dude. Besides not getting Meteor Skip, that was a pretty fast fight. By defeating Sephiroth, I finally reach level 100 and get the Level Master, Blade Master, One-Winged Angel, Searcher, Professor, and Record Keeper trophies. I ended up saving an additional 2 minutes and 13 seconds on my Olympus 100% grind. I then go back to Traverse Town for a quick pit stop and collect 6 new blueprints from Geppetto. I really hate that he gives them to you one at a time. I then go to the Duck Shop and purchase every single Donald Staff and Goofy Shield, which earns me the Master Magician and Master Defender trophies. With that out of the way, I only have the Gummy trophies left. For these trophies, I just need to go in between worlds with my beefed up Gummy Ship and collect any new blueprints that I see until I have 30 and finish getting 2500 enemy kills. For a sub 10 hour run, I only had a minute and 45 seconds to spare. And these blueprints do have a level of randomness to them, since some drops can be rare. At around the 9 hour and 55 minute mark of the run, I finally got the Gummy Ship Collector Trophy. However, the last trophy is going to be extremely down to the wire. Still not it. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. It's gonna be close. Is it gonna be really close? After the 9 hour, 58 minute, and 30 second mark, I still didn't have the Flying Ace Trophy. If I didn't get it in the very next Gummy Mission, Sub 10 would be impossible. However, it's not happening. When 
Yes. We did it. GG. Sub 10. Yes. Oh my goodness. GG. That's right, by just 20 seconds, I have achieved the world's third sub-10 hour Platinum Trophy speedrun in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Thank you very much for watching, and huge thanks to my channel members for supporting my YouTube endeavors. If you want to help me create videos for YouTube full-time, please consider pressing the join button and sponsoring the channel for just $4.99 a month. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.